Okay, so I wanted to make this video because sometimes in the coaching calls or sometimes in the comments, I'll get sections and questions where people will talk about how the ex just seems like they're completely numb to them anymore. Like whatever the feelings they had, and usually this is obviously a relationship that had some significance. So at one point, this person who felt like they would never leave you has not only left you, but they've left you and they seem like it's like somebody just flipped a switch. It's almost like you're dealing with another person or like a robotic version of the person that you thought you were never going to lose. So a breakup can be painful enough, but if it's gotten to the point that your ex doesn't seem to have any kind of emotional response or reaction or sense of loss to the breakup itself, that can make it even more painful. Sometimes it can be even more confusing because maybe when they broke up with you, they were crying. They were upset. They weren't even sure that they wanted to do this. Maybe they even offered friendship, but since the breakup, they just seem stronger than ever and you feel like maybe you're just sinking more than ever. So there are a few different variations on this. But I just want to encourage people, if you're going through this, it'll feel very much like there's no hope. It's supposed to feel that way. Don't trust what you feel. Don't even trust what seems like logic. Logically, you'll tell yourself, well, if they broke up with me then and they just seem better and happier, maybe they have even found somebody else. So there's no chance they're going to come back. So that seems like you're just kind of being, uh, you know, living in the real world. You might phrase it that way to yourself. That's not true either. There's a difference in logical and factual. Logical will tell you they're never coming back. Factual will tell you if you talk to people, if you read other, even other videos or comment sections, you'll see millions of people have felt like this relationship is never going to come back only for that relationship to come back together. Like even my own wife right now, we were, we were broken up for over 25 years, over 26 years, actually a long time. If you'd asked either one of us, both of us would have assured you that we're never even going to talk to each other, date, that there's no chance. And we've been married now for almost eight years. So things can happen that in the moment, maybe sometimes a long moment will feel like they're not going to happen. So don't give up. But just kind of diving in, I want to cover a few different areas of why it feels like or with situations where the ex just seems like they have lost all feeling for you, which now is just kind of multiplying and magnifying your own pain because it seems like it's really over forever. Number one, don't trust that feeling. Oh, so, so let's say that this is the person that broke up with you, but the two of you weren't together very long. Maybe it was a fast relationship, like somewhere under like three months even. But it seemed like hot and heavy and crazy, and the other person was just crazy about you. You were crazy about them. A lot of times situations like this happen with somebody with ADHD or somebody with borderline. It doesn't have to be. But sometimes either or both of those things are involved. But again, it doesn't have to be. It can just be a hey, two people that really felt that fire and it connected fast, but then something happened. Well, normally there's an old saying, if it starts, if it starts hot, like this burning flame and this like incredible star exploding in the sky, it'll probably end that way. It'll probably end like a supernova that just kind of burns out all the planets around it. So if this is a quick relationship and that person just seems kind of like they went from on a scale of 1 to 10, they loved you to a 37, and now it's like you don't exist. Or they just feel, maybe they feel pity, maybe they feel guilt, maybe they feel sympathy. All three of those things are attraction drainers. So sometimes pity, guilt, and sympathy can feel worse than nothing. If you're in this situation, chances are that other person kind of has one of those more extroverted mentalities. If they fell in love with you, if they fell in love with you and the attraction was so instant and so intense then they're probably kind of what we refer to as a, as a performer mentality. Somebody that's really kind of, they feel things very deeply. They connect very deeply. They usually have very good empathy. They can read a room. They can sense what other people are sensing. They can connect. They make friends. They're just kind of like extroverted, quick thinking, quick processing, deep feeling people. And when they really fall for you, it can just be, it's almost like you catch the intensity that they're giving off. And a lot of times to make it really confusing, this person who's broken up with you and who now seems to not have feelings for you, a lot of times they're the ones that initiated it. In other words, they're the ones that kind of targeted you, came after you, seduced you. And then when they got you, it's like you kind of felt like this euphoric sense of this is the greatest thing. This is the most intense thrill ride. This is so romantic and passionate. You feel activated. You feel like you not only found the love of your life, you feel like the best version of yourself when you're with them. And then all of a sudden... It's just gone. If you're dealing with that, remember this. If they can shift that quickly to be into you, if they can fall for you that fast and then fall out of love with you that fast, then I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but the likelihood of them being able to fall for you again is higher than it will feel. What you're falling for is the intensity of the moment. 
But look back on yourself. Look back on the relationship. Truthfully, if somebody had told you, hey, that person is going to come after you. That person is going to try to seduce you. That person is going to fall for you hard. Think back. In the beginning, if somebody had told you how much this person was going to want to be with you, it probably would have surprised you. When they actually started coming after you, trying to seduce you, trying to make that connection and pulling you in, that probably caught you off guard. When they broke up with you, it probably caught you off guard. So they've already shown this pattern of unexpected, unusual intensity with how they feel about you. If they can just fall for you this much, ooh, I want to be with him or her. Oh, now I don't want to be with him or her. In other words, if they can shift this way this fast, don't trust the position of the present. In other words, don't look at it like, well, but now it doesn't matter how much they wanted to be with me at the beginning. And it doesn't matter how much it surprised me when they said they didn't want to be with me just a few months later. The truth is right now they don't want to be with me. So this idea of believing right now as forever is going to seem really strong. If you're watching a football game, right, and your team does incredibly well in the first quarter, they, they score four touchdowns, you're going to be amazed. You're going to be really confident that they've got this game underhand. But let's say the next quarter, the other team comes back and they score four touchdowns and a field goal. Now you're going to think, oh, all the momentum is, oh, now it's over. There's no way they gave up a four touchdown lead. But if you have if you have a ball game like that, then you've just shown that both teams are capable of switching and changing the current position, the current situation of things. But much like that metaphor, if you're watching a game where you see the both teams are going back and forth like this, you're watching a volatile game, right? You're watching a game where swings can happen. So trust the pattern of the swings more than you trust the current position. So to keep going with that with, with that analogy, let's say in the third quarter, my team comes back and scores three three more touchdowns, and now they're up by three touchdowns again. Are you going to be as confident that next time? No, because you have a pattern of extreme change in position. So take a deep breath. If they really wanted you that much, they came after you that strong, and then it burned out, and then they pushed you away, and both of those movements seemed unexpected at the time. Is it really so incredible? Is it really so impossible to believe that they might come back again? But a lot of times that's the more volatile kind of personalities or the more um, extreme, more intensely feeling individuals that will fall for you that fast and then push you away. Now, this is discounting the fact this is assuming, of course, that you haven't done something like if you, you know, if you backed over their dog and then you, you know, threw their cat against the refrigerator. If you did something kind of brutal, you did something unusual to cause the breakup, then this doesn't apply. I'm talking about if this person really seemed to come after you and then stopped coming after you and then needed to disconnect from you or break up with you and you're just kind of left in limbo and you're not sure why. A lot of times in that situation, what they've done is kind of idealized you. The reason they were coming after you so much and so intensely in the beginning is because they kind of saw you as this prize or a challenge or something about you really got their attention. But then when they caught you, sometimes, you know, catching what we think we want so much can be a bit of a disappointment. So that extreme personality can kind of see you as on a scale of one to 10. They think you're this an amazing 15. But then when they catch you, nobody's going to live up to this idea of perfection forever. So maybe something happened in that short time that you were together that made them doubt their own feelings, maybe doubt how they saw you. And now they're pushing you away. Well, sometimes in that confusion, it can trigger you to really go after them, to try to talk them out of their decision. And the more you're trying to talk them out of the decision, the more you're accidentally reinforcing to them that you were never this person. I mean, because if you were this person, you wouldn't be begging, pleading, trying to you know reconnect and trying to save this relationship. But sometimes in the midst of that confusion, after the heartbreak or the, the breakup or the disconnect that we didn't see coming, that confusion and that panic drives us to chase. And when we chase, we accidentally project desperation. We accidentally project weakness. We accidentally project the things that aren't actually attractive, which reinforces the idea in them that they did the right thing. The next one is, let's say it's been a, actually a long term. Maybe what I just said is the first example is the, is the opposite. Maybe the person that you're trying to get back was with you for years and you never thought that they were going to leave you. And maybe it wasn't like this quick flash in the pan, this sudden eruption of passion that swept you off your feet. Maybe they've been in love with you for a really long time and you can't believe that you lost them. In that situation, it can be the most scary. It can be the one that you now you have enough time together and you're in this state of rejection. After the breakup, what happens is your mind kind of becomes hyper fixated on the breakup. It'll start analyzing all the things you did wrong. And let's say in this situation, you've been with them maybe for a matter of years. Well, now your mind is going back through all these moments, all this history all the time together and you're picking out every little oh i messed that up oh they tried to tell me how they felt there and i didn't listen uh, so you're really beating the daylights out of yourself 
And because you have more distance, because you have more length of the relationship to go over, you start accumulating a mountain of evidence about all the things you did wrong. They broke up with you, which is pretty strong evidence to you that you broke something. And now you have all this time to go back through and see all the little things you got wrong. All the moments that you wish you had responded or, or said or behaved or done something differently. And with it, with that much time, if you've been together for years, you could have the most perfect person in the world. They'll still be able to come up. You'll still be able to come up with evidence. So you're collecting your own mountain of evidence about what you did. Now, in this situation, there are two cases here. Maybe you really did cause it. If you did cause it, then don't just go into no contact. If you've been with somebody for years and throughout those years together, maybe you cheated on them multiple times. Maybe you were, uh, maybe you have a gambling addiction. Maybe you have a porn addiction. Maybe there's something about you that you've just kind of, that you've struggled with, but you actually caused the breakup. If you stay in conflict with somebody that you love long enough and nothing changes in that conflict, you can hit what they call the numb state. The numb state is when that other person finally becomes convinced that it doesn't matter how many times they tell you what they need. It doesn't matter how many times they tell you how much you hurt them. You're never going to change. And if you're never going to change, it's a subconscious thing. Something inside of them just breaks. Something inside of them just doesn't feel anything anymore. And they'll even use wording like, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Um, I loved you before, but I just can't do this anymore. They'll use phrases like, I'm done. I'm just empty. I just feel hollow. I just feel nothing. If you caused this, and I don't mean caused it by being imperfect. I don't mean, well, she kept telling me or he kept telling me that I need to spend more time with them. But because of my job, I was working 50 hours a week and I was really trying to sacrifice. I was really trying to work hard. That doesn't count. That's just an imperfection. That's just a challenge in a relationship. I don't mean that you weren't perfect. I mean, if you really did something to cause it, again, toxic behavior, manipulating behavior, addictions that you didn't address. If, if you were really the cause of it and those things apply, then, then obviously step into it. Own it. Don't go into no contact thinking, well, I'm just going to emotionally manipulate them until they come back. Because if this is the situation you're in, they probably won't come back. When you hit the numb state, you really just kind of, there's a part of you that just has become convinced that this was not a good match and that nothing's ever going to change. So if you do no contact in the middle of that situation, all you're doing is reinforcing to them that they did the right thing by breaking up with you. But now let's say you didn't cause it. You weren't cheating on them. You weren't like, you know, siphoning money out of the accounts. You know, you weren't like uh, killing the goldfish and slapping the dog or whatever you want to say, right? If you didn't actually cause the breakup, but the, the anxiety and the sense of loss and the fear is triggered enough hyperanalysis in you that you're convincing yourself that you caused the breakup, that's a different story. Don't fall for that voice. So don't apologize or keep apologizing for something to try to win them back. If your list of things, here's, here's the test. If you write your list of, hey, this is what I did to cause the relationship to break up and you show it to your friends and they're like, oh yeah, this happens to me. Oh yeah, I can understand how that would happen. Then you probably didn't really cause the breakup because there are challenges in every relationship. Me and my wife right now, we deal with things on a weekly basis. Things, okay, I wish I hadn't said that. I should have done that. I should have handled that differently. But we're committed to each other. So we, it doesn't really rock that foundation of us being together. So if the challenges and reasons they're handing to you for the reason for the breakup seem more like just imperfections that are going to be a part of any relationship, then don't take that as I caused the breakup. This will particularly happen more often if somebody else is involved. Like if your ex is already in a rebound relationship, they'll kind of repackage an imperfect but strong, even a great relationship and hand it back to you and say, we were never really the fit that I thought we were. We never really belonged together as much as we both thought we did. Because when you fall for somebody else, if your ex has fallen into limerence with another person, one of the impacts of that limerence of falling for someone is that your mind will kind of go back and rewrite history. In other words, God forbid, if my wife left me and she fell for somebody else and she was in limerence with somebody else, part of that limerence is like a brainwashing. That limerence will go in and convince her that she's never been as happy with me as she's been. It'll go back in and convince her that it's, we've never really belonged together as much as we thought we did. And this new person is going to be even more attractive. So it's like that, that limerence really kind of rewires your mind. So if they're with somebody else, it's more likely the reasons they're handing you for the breakup, unless again, you clearly cause the breakup, then the reasons they're handing you probably aren't really the reasons for the breakup. But they need to believe that. It's a subconscious, it's a subconscious desire, especially if we're in limerence. Part of limerence is we think this is the person meant for me. Well, if this is the person meant for me, you can't be the person meant for me. 
And if you can't be the person meant for me, in spite of the fact that I remember believing you were the person I was supposed to be with, then I almost need to subconsciously rewrite history. In other words, you know, I have evidence that I'm making the right choice by falling in love with this new person. Because look at all the things that were wrong with us. And they'll come up with a long list of imperfections. You're in so much pain that when you're in that state of rejection, which I call dark limerence, your thinking is thrown off just as much as theirs. So you'll go into this list of reasons why you can't be together and you'll convince yourself that you really caused it. A lot of times in a situation where you didn't really cause it. So if they've fallen for somebody else and you're not sure that you didn't cause that breakup, don't reach out to them and try to convince them that now you see and now you understand and now you've learned and now you can change everything if they would just give you one more chance. It's going to be a very strong and natural compulsion, but don't do it. The more you kind of jump in and try to compete with that new person if this situation applies to you, the more you're reinforcing the idea that the two of them are supposed to be together. Now it's like you're the parent that's told the child, I forbid you to date that person. Well, that parent just became the cause that these two are now united in overcoming. So if you keep chasing that person, even if that person, it seems like they've lost feeling for you and you never thought they were going to lose feeling for you, but they've started dating somebody else, don't think jumping in and competing with that new person is going to help you. It'll reinforce the idea that the two of them are supposed to be together and you'll be the unifying obstacle that's trying to keep them apart. It romanticizes the new relationship even more. So if this is your situation, I understand it's one of the more painful, confusing, and, and one of the more just kind of tormenting situations. All that together will create this need for you to clarify. Hey, I, I want you to know, I've, I've gone back. I've thought about everything you said. I see what you were trying to tell me. I understand that I messed it up. Look, I have a 17-page diary. I've been keeping track of everything that I've realized now. If you could just know, if you could just see, just read this read this 17 page letter I've got for you. And we think if they just knew how deeply we regret and how much we love, that will be the evidence to pull them back. There's a part of us that just thinks we just need to remind them. It's almost like they've forgotten who we are and, and the love that we had and how well we belong together. Must They must have forgotten all those memories that I can't get out of my head. If I could just find a way to remind them of who I am, take a deep breath. It doesn't work that way. But if you can stop that compulsion and not jump in and try to remind them of who you are and try to prove to them that you see all the things that they needed you to see, there's still a good chance they're going to come back. Give them time to let that new relationship, that new limerence play out without the added reinforcement of you trying to talk them into coming back to you because that's actually hurting you way more than you know. Give yourself a chance to just don't trust the fear. Don't trust what that little voice is telling you that says you've got to do something now. No, you don't. Just kind of work on two things. Work on projecting resilience. You don't have to project happiness. You don't have to act like you're on a party bus having the time of your life and that you don't miss them. Don't don't go for apathy. Just go for strength. You can even admit to your friends, to them, that you hurt. But on the, on the outside, try to project the resilience and the strength to move on. Contentment and, and strength and just resilience are highly underrated. You know, we tend to think, do I, am I the douchebag who doesn't care? Or am I the heartbroken, sincere person that begs and pleads? You don't want to be either one of those. You want to be the person with the kind of heart that really hurts, but the, but the, the kind of douchebag strength that shows that, hey, I can live without you. I don't want to, but I can. So it's a combination. It's the strength of the douchebag, but the strength of the man with a heart or the woman with a heart. If you can maintain that and project it, give that new relationship time to play out. Because I can promise you, there's not a relationship in the world, unless you're delusional, where the reality has ever lived up to the fantasy. I mean, fantasy is fantasy. And when you're in limerence, you've got hormones and you've got these things flooding into your bloodstream that are making you feel a literal high. But it doesn't stay that way forever. So give it a chance for that other relationship to play out. Don't let the fact that it seems like you're now dealing with a completely different person cause you so much pain that that pain compels you to try to find a way to remind them who you are, who they are, and how much the two of you belong together. It won't really work in that moment. And then the third example I want to give is let's say that it was a, it, the two of you were engaged. I mean, it was hot. It was heavy. It was intense uh, socially, sexually, mentally, physically. Even sense of humor wise, two of you really, you really just fit. And it was like on a scale of one to 10, it was a 5,000. It was a supernova. And now they've not only broken up with you, maybe now they've even vilified you. So it's not just that they don't have those warm feelings for you. Like we're talking about, they've lost feelings for you. Maybe they've gained feelings for you. And maybe those feelings are contempt. Like I have some clients that are actually surprisingly, 
really high value. And I don't mean high value like they're just, uh, you know, materialistically successful. I'm talking about some of the most intelligent, loving, successful, driven, unusual, just uh, you might call them alpha males or alpha females, whatever it is, kind of some real badass people in life that are in love with somebody that is just tormenting them, that are just rejecting them, not only breaking up with them, but telling them horrible things and just verbally and textually, if that's a word, abusive. Like, I hate you. I can't believe I ever fell for you. Stay away from me. So if they're doing that, but they're not blocking you. So this one, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is this will be the kind of situation where all your friends and family are telling you to get away from this person. Wow, this person seems to hate you. This person seems crazy. Just leave them alone. Get away from them. And maybe you don't even feel like you can tell your friends and family what you're going through in this situation because you're embarrassed that you're taking this level of abuse. You're embarrassed for taking this abuse and you feel like if your friends and family know just how abusive your ex is being, they'll never forgive your ex. And you still want to win them back. So you're kind of suffering in silence. You're taking an emotional beating from somebody that not too long ago was ready to be with you forever. Maybe even agreed to marry you or thought of you as the greatest love of their life. And now not only are you not the love of their life, they're treating you like you're something that they wipe off the bottom of their dog's foot when they trample through a manure field. If this is you, one of those extreme situations, it can kind of catch you off guard so much that you might actually be a person with a strong sense of uh, identity. You might be the kind of person that's never really taken abuse, that's always had a strong line of what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not. And now you find yourself tolerating more abuse than even you can believe. You think you're a wimp. You think you're weak. You think you're a fool. But the truth is that emotional connection was so strong, it's almost like you're just trying to hang on for dear life. I don't know why they're accusing me of these things. I don't know why they're saying I'm, I'm, I'm worthless. I don't know why they're saying they hate me. I don't know where all this anger is coming from. But I remember back to when it was so good that it, it, it's got to be confusion. So don't beat yourself up because you're tolerating things that you wouldn't normally tolerate. If you run into a level of abuse that you're not expecting, more often than people want to talk about, it's almost instinct. Because it's confusing. So we think, well, wait a minute, there's got to be something off. Even though I know I don't deserve it, maybe they really think I deserve it. Maybe they keep saying, hey, I know you're cheating on me. You must think I'm a fool, accusing you of things you didn't do. Well, you're going you're gonna to instinctively, well, you'll know that you're not cheating on them. But you'll think, well, maybe they believe, even though I know I didn't do it, maybe they really believe that I'm this horrible person. And if they believe I'm a really horrible person, then what's the best way to handle it? I know. I'll be patient. I'll be understanding. They tell me they hate me. I say I love them. They say I'm trash. I say you're the love of my life. I say I hate you. They say I hate you. Get away from me. Never contact me again. And I'll say, I don't understand this, but I'll love you forever. If you ever change your mind, please, please just give me two minutes. Can we just talk? You really want to beat yourself up for that. But believe it or not, it's much more of a natural reaction. When somebody hits us with something that seems irrational and out of the blue, confusion makes us kind of an authentic person Confusion will cause them to blame themselves first. Well, maybe I did do something. And then that authentic person will go back and look at what they've done recently and they'll find real reason to believe they made a mistake because that's what authentic does. Authentic people are, are the first people to look at themselves and find flaws, imperfections. And because this person is treating you such a, in such a horrible way, we convince ourselves that those imperfections and those mistakes even though it doesn't seem to make sense, maybe we really did cause it. Maybe we really did justify it. So if this is the case, don't fall for that. Stand up for yourself. You don't have to be abusive back, but if they're being abusive to you and it seems like they've lost all feeling, don't believe it. If they've really lost all feeling, they would cut contact. It would be a one paragraph text. It would be never contact me again. And that's it. So if they're still abusing you with these long text threads, and I've got clients that send them to me all the time, that's not a person who's really walking away. Believe it or not, you're still in the relationship with them. You're just in a toxic relationship, so it feels like you've been completely thrown away. If you were really thrown away, you wouldn't be getting that kind of abuse in the first place. But don't think that tolerating it and even accepting it and pretending like it's true is your path to get them back because it doesn't work that way. You don't gain respect and attraction by tolerating disrespect. You only prove that you were never worthy of their attraction in the first place. So I hope this helps. Every situation is different. I'm Coach Ken. You can reach me at realcoachken.com. If I've been any help, please give me a like or subscribe, and I'll talk to you again soon.